Good morning, folks. We've got continued solar flare activity from the incoming sunspot group. We'll take our first peek at the magnetism of that active region. There is devastating flooding in California, and we'll look at space weather force and global dynamics. We are starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and the focus is entirely on the southern incoming sunspots, bottom left. They are crackling with M-class solar flares and have the potential to produce X-class flares as well. So far, the flares have been mostly impulsive, and in the darkened 131 angstrom view, we can see how that active region is popping with the flare flashes. It will be facing Earth over the next couple of days, and will continue monitoring the area for any eruptions that produce Earth-directed CMEs. The sunspot group itself is quite large, the largest on the Earth facing half of the sun right now. The departing spots on the south have some size, but it's nothing compared to what's incoming. The magnetism of those sunspots will be better visible when they are more facing the Earth, but this morning we can make our first diagnosis and we find that the blue positive cores are intruding into the red negative lead, with significant solar mixing. Hopefully we recall that sunspot magnetic classification video from a week ago, Flare Watch is high. Meanwhile, there was a slight solar wind perturbation over the last 24 hours. It's looking like it's likely the edge of a coronal hole stream. It's not very strong and is driving only minor reverberations in Earth's magnetic field while the KP index remains fairly low. No solar storm conditions from it as of now. Up next, we're going to the major storm hitting California. Tropical storm force wind gusts and lasting downpours have caused an incredible amount of flooding and leaving hundreds of thousands, nearly a million, without power. Mudslide risk remains high as well as residual flooding as the storm system tail is long and flowing. Lastly, folks, hopefully we remember the discovery of the Jupiter auroral heating, which beams power and energy towards the equator, heating its atmosphere. Hopefully we also recall how these equatorward traveling waves happen on Earth, too. One of the ways that solar storm energy entering at the polar region impacts the entire planet, which then excites the global electric circuit from the top, which then impacts pressure cells, temperature, precipitation, wind, and more across the world. This same process messed with the global thermospheric density during the Starlink satellite loss when a minor geomagnetic storm impacted during takeoff in February 2022. 38 satellites were lost during what was expected to be only a minor solar impact, but its effect on the ionosphere due to the increasing energy penetration was significant due to Earth's weakening magnetic field, and it spread across the world due to those electrodynamic interactions from the aurora heading towards the equator. Don't forget, our store is closing in four days as we focus on the opening of Observer Ranch coming in a few months. It's last chance to get our new book and much more. Store closes February 9th. Link is below. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.